Hello, I'm Jennifer Lee Levitt. This is Unleash the Power of Age. We are here for the um, Council on Aging of Gloucester and specifically the Rose Baker Senior Center and everything in the community that relates to seniors, elders, and well, families because geez, we all have families. Anyway, my guests today are uh, David Holden, who is the executive director of the Gloucester Housing Authority, and Corinne Lippi, who um, I think is the executive director. Are you the director? Program or, director. Okay, of um, a Backyard Growers. And we'll be having information from both of them and then a little bit of a conversation uh, as we have time. So welcome, David. Welcome, Corinne. And uh, we'll start with David talking to us about uh, the um, Gloucester housing as it relates to seniors. Sure. Uh, thank you, Jennifer Lee. Um, uh, you know, the, the Gloucester Housing Authority, we you know assist over uh, 1,350 households uh, in Gloucester uh, with housing, uh, aiming at households that make uh, less than 80% of area median income, which is most of us. Uh, we have five elderly housing developments, which are at Lincoln Park, Poplar Park, uh, McPherson Park on Prospect Street, the Sheedy Building over on Pleasant Street, and the Clark Building, which most people know as the old armory uh, down at 99 Prospect. Uh, the, you know, the past few months have been particularly challenging for all of us, but I, I think particularly for seniors in our community, it, it's been a, a particularly challenging time. And for the Housing Authority, our main goal has been to keep our seniors uh, safe and healthy uh, during the pandemic. Uh, and uh, we've been working with our local health department to be able to do that. And, you know, uh, every, everyone's been staying in. Uh, we had a, a lockdown, which everyone knows uh, went on for three months. But uh, if you're a, a, an older member of our community, the lockdown was particularly difficult uh, because we all know that, unfortunately, the uh, COVID-19 affects elders uh, at, at a far more uh, disproportionate proportionally than it does the, the rest of our community. So folks have been locked down um, and we have been really trying to reach out to our seniors. Um, our staff has been doing a phenomenal job. Uh, we're uh, on the phone constantly and I'm proud to say that we talk to every single one of our residents every week uh, since March 15th to make sure that everyone was okay, everyone was healthy and everyone had what they needed and if they didn't trying to work with them uh, to do that. Uh, now we're all starting to come out now, uh, which is great, uh, but that also uh, it has to be done in a very cautious way. Uh, the virus is still out there and uh, we're really trying to message to all of our residents that we still need to be safe. Uh, we do require that if you're in any common area of any of our properties, that you have a mask. Uh, we've been fortunate uh, that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts provided us with some of the masks that the Kraft family brought over from China. Um, and we have been making sure that uh, I've been just doing deliveries about an hour ago to, to elders who needed masks. And if anyone needs a mask and you're one of our residents, give us a call at 978-281-4770. Um, and we do deliver to the door. Uh, the other thing is really trying to make sure uh, that people are socially uh, being distant, uh, which is difficult. Um, and it's why I think it's really important that we're making these phone calls because people are very isolated during this time. Um, the other thing that's really important uh, for people in our communities to, to know and the whole community to know is that we have remained open throughout the pandemic um, and that we are still available. We are still uh, you know, encouraging people to apply not only for elderly housing, but also for our rental assistance programs, most notably the Section 8 program. There is a long wait. Uh, but you can apply during the pandemic, uh, you know, simply by giving us a phone call at 978-281-4770 and we'll send you out an application. Or you can go to our website, uh, which is www.gha, 
ma.com and either download an application or you can actually apply online now. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, call our office and ask for Colin, uh, who is our housing specialist who uh, has just joined our team and is really uh, working just with applicants and will help you work through the process. Uh, but we know that there's a tremendous need for elderly housing within our community. Uh, we have about a three year wait to get into elderly housing. Uh, we are able to get veterans in sooner and, and less than a year. And the other thing that a lot of people don't know is that, you know, if someone is in a medical emergency, uh, say we have a senior who has had a change in the medical condition and it's no longer safe for them to be in their house, they're on the second floor and they can't do stairs, uh, you know, give us a call. There are priority situations so that we can help people sooner. Um, uh, housing is probably along with food security, the two big needs that we have in our community. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's important that people understand that they can call the housing authority at any point. We'll let you know what options are out there. Uh, you know, the other thing is our community needs more options uh, for housing for the elderly. And uh, Jennifer, I hope at some point, maybe we could come back on and have that conversation, which I know you're very passionate about yeah. um, uh, to do. Um, but no, we're, we remain here um, and, you know, by all means, give our staff a call or call me directly and, you know, we can walk you through what your options are for, for housing in, in the community. Um, the other uh, great thing that has happened during the pandemic is we've been trying to do a lot of improvements to our senior properties and uh, we've had a project which has taken a long while to, uh, to be going but uh, we finally have an amazing glass elevator at the Sheedy building uh, which now looks like the Marriott um, and uh, to, to have that happen during the pandemic made the folks over at the Sheedy building feel very proud um, so uh, I wanted to announce that publicly uh, we are halfway through the major renovations over at McPherson Park. Uh, the work up in the apartments where we're gonna be completely renovating uh, the 97 apartments in that building is on hold until things calm down a little bit with the pandemic. Uh, but we have been able to complete the common area improvements and um, we've been working very close both with senior care and also with backyard growers uh, to improve uh, the services uh, over there. Uh, but it's been a lot going on at, at the Housing Authority, Jennifer, as, as, as you know, and we're fortunate to have uh, you as one of our, our commissioners, and I'm very happy about that. Um, and also very happy because we've been working very host, uh, closely with, uh, with, with Connie and Backyard Growers on a lot of projects. And, um, you know, uh, Connie's probably better suited to talk about some of them, but... Uh, we're really fortunate to have backyard growers in Gloucester. Um, and it's really helped to build a sense of community at the, the developments that they've been working at. Um, and, uh, you know, particularly at McPherson Park, we just doubled the size of the community garden over there. Uh, it's now fully handicap accessible. And uh, even during the pandemic, folks have been gardening. Um, and I, I, I think that it has been a lifeline uh, to a lot of our residents, particularly in the past two months, um, as the growing season has started. And um, Connie, I think it's been pretty, it's, it's been a slow kickoff this year, but I think it's been pretty successful over there. Yeah, it has. I would agree. Thanks, David. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, and I don't know if this is a good segue, Jennifer Lee, if you want it's me to. It's perfect. I was, I could, I could hear it. My, my sense <laughs> was tingling like crazy. Um, yes. Please go ahead, Corinne. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. I think to David's last point around being a lifeline. There are so many um, stories we've heard, um, and I'll talk more about what we've been doing about. But but the resonance with how impactful having a space to grow food in, how meaningful that's been for folks um, who are particularly vulnerable to, um, and for whom there was a lot of fear around going out and, and mingling in traditional um, you know, shopping scenarios. And so not only the easy, affordable access to healthy food that growing their own food has provided, but also the mental health benefit and the physical activity benefit of, of having that resource right at folks disposal. Um, so Backyard Growers, this is, we've just finished our 10th year um, in Gloucester and we 
um, kind of have two main areas within which we work, our school programs and our community programs. And obviously I'll talk more about our community programs today on the show. Um, but as with every other organization, we had a pretty dramatic pivot in the spring. Um, normally March is a big gearing up time for us launching the growing season and um, a lot of what we try and do to build community around the over 10 community gardens that we managed throughout the city of Gloucester had to shift to a different format. So we spent a good chunk of April getting resources, growing resources, you know, seeds, um, soil, compost, growing bags out to residents of Gloucester and Rockport um, and delivering right to their doorsteps actually to make it even more um, easy and low risk for folks. Um, so we moved all of our growing resources into an online shop, which still exists and where we still have resources for people to purchase um, and pick up from our office at 3 Duncan Street. Um, and uh, we came up with creative ways to get um, folks in the community seeds, which were in high demand this year. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so for example, at McPherson Park, um, where we manage those new wonderful community gardens, uh, raised garden beds um, that David mentioned, we made little packets of seeds for all of the residents there who garden and, and delivered them safely um, into people's raised beds and then let them know that they were there so that they could go out at a later time safely by themselves and, and access those seeds. And at Burnham's Field, where Jennifer Lee has a, a plot, we um, created seed packets that we then left for all of the gardeners taped to the inside of the shed um, over there with the bed numbers so that people could go um, safely and, and access those resources. Um, and we did similar things at, at Willowwood and Riverdale, um, which are also GHA properties that we work in for community gardens. Um, we've done a lot of curbside pickups of seedlings and other um, resources to just facilitate access to um but for folks to be able to to grow their own food safely at home um, and then we have a program the backyard um, garden program where we this year um, built over 20 raised beds for low-income seniors around gloucester um, right in their backyards and because uh, backyard growers is considered an essential service in spite of the pandemic we were able to continue to do that work safely um, with uh, no, you know, um, direct access with the homeowners for whom we were building gardens, so we could do that um, with, you know, having the conversations on the phone as well as then kind of meeting them with socially distanced space mm -hmm. um, at their properties to build raised beds and then provide them with training and resources um, directly and virtually through um, Zoom trainings for our garden trainings, which would have normally been done in person. Um, we've beefed up our resources page on our website. So if folks are interested in growing um, food or, or would like more resources, we have our own garden guide that's on our resources page and a whole bunch of other links to- That is resources. Um, so it's on our website, um, backyardgrowers.org. Okay. Uh, lowercase. And then there's a resources um, tab that they can click and, and um, that information is all there for free for folks to access. Um, and uh, we have a whole variety of um, volunteer mentors who work throughout the community to support gardeners in our programs. And that includes um, at GHA properties, so at McPherson Park and Poplar Park, we're able to continue to support residents through those sites with our own, um, through our own support and training, but also through volunteer mentors who can help provide additional support. You know, if, if partners get stuck along the way or they're new to growing and they can use a little moral support or have questions. Um, and again, I think because of the isolation this year, just having, um, folks in the community who are reaching out to individuals in those um, housing developments and encouraging them and, and, you know, having conversations about positive, uplifting 
um, growing uh, activities has, we've heard, just continued to be invaluable to um, program participants, particularly those who are increasingly and uh, continue to be isolated. Um, and and it, it, it's really, I, I, I think, as you said, it, it's really been a lifeline and just watching the residence garden, people are just beaming when they are gardening uh, because it, it's one is one of the few social things that people have been able to do in the past few months, but to, you know, really to have their hands in the earth, to be, to be growing things and they're finding commonality with their neighbors that they never knew that they had before. Um, and uh, I, I think not only McPherson, but particularly uh, the Willowood Garden, which uh, got kicked off last year and, and is in its second season, um, really helped to foster a, a huge sense of, of community. Um, and also, I, I think, uh, you know, broke down a lot of barriers uh, between between residents. Um, uh, you know, our, our, uh, our developments are all multicultural. Um, and uh, I, I think there's been a far greater understanding of uh, people's other uh, past cultural backgrounds as a result of, of the gardens. Um, we have a number of immigrant families uh, at our Willowwood development who came from agricultural uh, countries and actually uh, had a good deal of knowledge concerning uh, uh, growing in, in agriculture and have been able to also work as mentors with the, with the other families. And we've seen friendships develop that never would have developed before. Um, and it, I just think it's, it's amazing beyond the sustenance of food, um, you know, the sustenance of community that, it, that is developed as a result of the work. And I, I think it's beyond what either the GHA or backyard growers had ever envisioned uh, was going to end up happening. I think that, well, just my experience at, at Burnham's Field in my garden is, um, it's the high point of my summer. This is my third, it's my third or fourth. It's um, everything both of you have said. I've met people that I would never have known. I had a choice to make this year. I was eligible to have a garden put in my yard. And I chose to stay in the community garden uh, because it's so, it's so, it has meant so much to me to be there in, in the, uh, the community. It's not where I live, but so it's another part of my life that is expanded in, in more ways than I could ever have anticipated. Yeah, no, I think that that, that those like ad additional spokes of the wheel are often the pieces people don't think about as much when they think about growing food because I think they do think about in a, in a kind of more linear sense of just food access but there's so much more and I think even more poignantly this year um, that feeds no pun intended into a sense of community into um, a mental health release into um, you know physical well-being those two the the mental well-being that the degree of what to which my garden helps me stay sane and helps me relax as well as getting exercise that I might not get in any other way. And um, yeah, we've seen me. new, um, we've, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Jennifer. Like, I was just gonna say, we've, seen, we've had um, a number of new volunteers come to us similarly who are looking to do something active and give back and may themselves have recently been laid off and are looking for something that they can do productively and feel good about in a contributing way to their community. And they're so eager to go out and, and weed at our sites, which is such a <laughs> benefit to us. If anyone else is eager to do that, please let us know. We can always use the help, but um, you know, they they have a, almost a similar kind of beaming effect when they feel like they've um, contributed and, and lent their time in a meaningful way that they know also helps to beautify an area that other um, residents or community members are, right. are using. Well, I just, I, where I'm, whenever I go, I'm very careful to keep my mask on. Um, uh, even when I'm alone, I do it because it's good because I have a lot of allergies. But uh, I want us to emphasize that people are being uh, either distant, socially distant, whenever 
uh, possible and um, wearing masks during these processes. Is that correct? Right. They, they are. I, I mean, we're fortunate. Uh, the, the McPherson uh, Gardens, uh, the residents in Barker Growers have set up a protocol. So there is really only one person at one of the beds at any time. Uh, the beds coincidentally happen to be six feet apart from each other uh, and people can be on opposite sides of them. Uh, the residents are, are vigilant about wearing masks uh, and police each other. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if someone's not wearing a mask, they know it. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's worked well. I mean, we, we have also, there have been some uh, situations where we have some residents who cannot wear a mask because of a medical condition. Um, but they have, residents have worked it out that they, you know, they are working in other beds which are, are, are farther away from other ones so that they're able to still be able to engage in the, in the activity, which is, is a challenge for some of our population is, that, you know, there's some people who have significant uh, respiratory issues and uh, this has allowed them to be able to still participate in, and not feel ostracized or, during the pandemic. Oh, that's great. Which has been good. But, you know, I, we're, I don't think that, you know, those of us on KPN realize how lucky we are to have backyard growers in our community. Um, you know, this isn't something that, that happens uh, everywhere. And, um, uh, you know, since its, its inception, um, it, it's really been, a, a, you know, a, a, a Gloucester-driven uh, nonprofit that, that has a mission. Um, uh, and I, I, I think that it's a mission that's worked really well with our mission, um, you know, it, particularly as, as we've really tried to uh, have a lot more, you know, social and educational opportunities within our developments and, and be able to have, um, you know, a more fulfilling residential experience than, than we used to be able to have in our developments. Um, Backyard Growers was really instrumental in our being able to get uh, the grant that is rehabilitating McPherson Park uh, because that grant we needed to leverage a lot of services. And the one thing that we were able to do that no other housing authority in the Commonwealth was able to do was to have uh, basically uh, a community garden organization uh, that was going to be working hand in hand with us. Uh, we'd already developed a relationship and we were able to expand that along with it being able to expand the senior care resources that we have in that building as well. Um, and now uh, we've been fortunate to have another grant uh, come our way from, uh, from the state to be able to uh, expand services in our other four elderly developments. And we're actually just hiring uh, a position that's, that's gonna be assisting with that. And um, you know, if funding allows, you know, hopefully backyard growers and, and other players will be able to have a, a better presence in some of their other developments. Uh, we have a small garden that's going in Poplar Park, which is, has been successful. Um, but, you know, uh, my dream, uh, Connie, is, is, you know, is to have a zucchini everywhere. Um, <laughs> so someday maybe we will. <laughs> Um, and anything else? Just for the long run. So I think having uh, yeah. having these resources available now and, and long into the future is really important to, to continue to, to I, consider. I think the synergy is is fabulous. That um, uh, that the backyard growers and the housing authority not only can actually help each other um, and support and and. Uh, improve the quality of lives at the um, facilities. And um, I don't know how to put this exactly. Give backyard growers a nice outlet, a really good way to get into the community. You know, the, the mutual um, benefit is inspiring to me. Uh, and I hope, there, I hope people do appreciate what we have here, you know, you put backyard growers into a search engine and it comes up with this backyard growers. We are it. And, uh, and I think that that says a lot. Um, well, they, Gloucester Housing Authority and David are really terrific partners. And it's, um, I think this, you know, as we've been talking about the synergy, but I think because we have such a productive and good working um, 
working relationship with not only David, but his whole staff and team. Um, it just, I think, facilitates the impact that these community spaces at the developments that they run, um, you know, it, it makes it all work. Other, otherwise, I don't think it would. So, um, and it's just, it's such a relief because I think there was kind of a panic at the start of the pandemic about what, what it would mean for community gardens and for individuals, um, particularly those who are vulnerable by age or health condition to be able to have access to those spaces and to just be able to be in July and feel a sense of relief and, and um, kind of purpose knowing how important um, and, you know this has been, um, access to these spaces and resources have been this year. It's a relief and, and gives a lot of peace of mind to feel like it can continue. If we can get through you know, this pandemic and come out the other end and continue to innovate and be creative about how we can, you know, continue to, to do more knowing um, what we've learned that um, it bodes well for the future. Mm -hmm. And I think the, uh, the other thing that's been really important this year um, is we've experienced a different type of food security security than, than we have in a very long time. Uh, where have been times where, you know, you, you, you go to the supermarket and there are items that are not there, and that has included produce. Um, and also, uh, as an editorial comment, the quality of produce, um, you know, when you go to the store. And, and for the seniors in our development, the other thing that has been very true is uh, the, the legitimate anxiety about going to the grocery store right now. Um, you know, particularly for, you know, for high risk populations, uh, you know, going out is not the best thing to be doing. Um, and uh, I, I've heard from a number of residents, the relief that their gardens are now producing for them because they're not having to worry about going to the stores often. Um, and that, you know, the other thing is that, that the, the quality that the produce they're getting is actually in sometimes the first, someone said it's the first good head of lettuce I've seen in months, um, the, uh, you know, because the, the quality of our food sources has, has gone downhill because, because of the pandemic. So um, it, it's just, it, it's been vital in a way, I think that none of us ever anticipated that it, that it was going to. Uh, but uh, it, people are, people are feeling more secure in many ways because because of what your backyard growers are doing, and also with, with other entities within uh, within our uh, community doing well. I, I know uh, the Open Door has been doing a phenomenal job with food Absolutely. security, and Connie, I know you, you work very closely with Julie Lafontaine and her staff. Um, yeah, and we so we've switched. I mean, not switched, but we've been able to infuse the local food system with with kind of homegrown food right here, both by growing at the open door and at um, Action's Homeless Shelter, but also in the spring we grew food um, at the middle school that we then um, infused into food distribution through the schools and then at the open door. And we'll continue to find ways in the fall um, to, to do that so that we can get direct food access into agencies already doing that work and directly to the community through the schools or another. That's another. great. I I think we're uh, just about at our uh, our time. Um, I, I have a quick note that uh, speaking of food sources, every summer uh, through senior care, there have been uh, farmers market coupons given at Rose Baker to people, seniors who qualify. We brought that back. That's going to be available now. You need to call Rose Baker and uh, someone there will help you. That number is 978-281. 9765 to get the details on having coupons to spend at the virtual farmer's market. Uh, well, it's, it's real. You just have to do it a little weirdly. Anyway, um, Corinne, thank you so much. Uh, thank, David, you thank you so much. Uh, very informative. And it's, it's, I don't know if you can see, I'm, I'm practically teary. <laughs> I having this, um, serendipitous uh, meeting, uh, conversation with you to, to, to give it an example of how beautifully um, our community comes together. Uh, always, but especially now, I'm, I'm moved. Thank you both so much. 
Thank you very much, Jennifer Lee and, and Corinne. Always thank you to, thank you. to Backyard Growers and, and Laura and everyone over there for, for helping out us and, and the people that we serve. Of course, our pleasure. We look forward to continuing to do so. Thank so, you. Here we go. Just remember to unleash your power of age. Thank you and goodbye.